Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 28th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. But we got an interesting new side channel attack. In this case, it's affecting GPUs, not CPUs. Of course, we had a bunch of different side channel attacks over the last few years in CPUs. Well, GPUs overall shouldn't really be all that different. And uh, so no real big surprise that it affects GPUs. But uh, the kind of vulnerability here is sort of unique to GPUs. GPUs are often compressing traffic. Of course, video traffic is known to compress fairly well. And uh, as so often, the ratio at which content compresses allows you to deduct some properties of the content itself. What makes this paper even sort of more amazing is that they actually managed to implement this attack in a web browser. Web browsers are trying really hard to separate data loaded from different web pages or different origins. As a result, if you have two windows open, well, a JavaScript in one of those windows cannot access the other window if these two pages were loaded from different origins. What they demonstrated here in the paper is that they were able to load a page, they used Wikipedia as an example, into an iframe. And then the page that contained the iframe was able to deduct content off the page inside the iframe, which, well, shouldn't be possible in a sort of proof of concept they were able to read the username. Now, they picked the username here because it wasn't a very specific location of the page. This attack is, like many side channel attacks, not very fast. Speed and accuracy depends a lot on the screen resolution as well as on the CPU and GPU being used here. The fastest they had was uh, two pixels per second, but with a 99.6% accuracy. Some of the uh, slower ones are going down to like 0.2 uh, pixels per second. So basically it takes you five seconds to deduct the content of a single pixel. Still for a proof of concept, that's certainly not bad and uh, certainly useful to, for example, read content like uh, in this case, usernames or other confidential data from another web page that the script running on the attacker's web page should not have access to. I will, of course, link uh, to the paper in the show notes. Uh, There is a ton of detail in the paper about how these graphic cards do compression and sort of what kind of tricks these researchers were using in order to read out the pixels. And CISA, as well as Cisco, have today published advisories that warn of compromised routers that are being equipped with a compromised firmware that enables backdoor access to these devices. Essentially, the firmware that's being uploaded into these devices does implement its own SSH server that can then be used to connect directly to the device, bypassing any logging that you may usually have. There also appears to be a crafted TCP packet that's being used in order to essentially turn this backdoor on or off, probably in order to avoid having it found, for example, by just simply port scanning the device. Not a ton of detail here in these advisories, like I didn't see any details about what exact TCP packet is being used or what port, for example, this uh, SSH server looks at. It's possible that uh, these uh, signatures are kind of too ephemeral and uh, keep uh, changing, but it would be kind of nice to see sort of uh, what to look for here. I should also point out that uh, the attack here does not actually exploit any vulnerability in any of the affected routers. It just uses, well, a stupid old weak passwords that are being guessed here by the attacker. It appears to affect routers other than Cisco as well, but uh, the Cisco advisory doesn't state which routers are affected here, just points out Cisco and like I said, Cisco also published a related advisory. 
let me have a little bit more confusion and uh, such about the WebP vulnerability. Remember, that's the one that uh, was sort of assigned uh, different uh, CVE numbers by Google, by Apple and others. Well, uh, Google now tried to actually submit a new CVE to basically resolve uh, these issues. That CVE number was rejected and just sort of merged in the one that was already submitted. We'll have to see how this all works out, but I think it's just a fact of life that we'll have to live with two CVE numbers possibly pointing to the same vulnerability. And Dependabot, the tool that GitHub developed in order to sort of uh, detect any dependencies issues with your repositories and also suggest automatically fixes for any of these issues, apparently is being impersonated by malicious actors. According to check marks, uh, GitHub repositories are being flooded with commits from a user that claims to be Dependabot. At least that's the name assigned to itself. And uh, the commits being submitted uh, by this user are actually implementing uh, backdoors like to steal secrets, usually via new GitHub actions that are being suggested. So double check your commits, you know, definitely review them, make sure they're really from Dependabot and uh, not from any malicious users like this. This is, of course, something that's going to affect uh, public repositories that uh, allow com commits from various users. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.